Welcome to another episode of the Canon on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today talking about episode two of Loki on Disney Plus um, was kind of out of town, so I didn't have time to uh, knock it out last week closer to when it came out. But this is fine. This works right before the new one comes out because I got questions, people. I got theories. I got questions. And I swear, like, the more I think about this show and or at least the first two episodes that we got, the more questions I have. And, and I've said this before, and I think plenty of other people have said this, that when you start messing with time travel, it just gets messy. It just like, and I hear a number of people still say, well, Endgame pulled it off. No, it didn't. Endgame has a bunch of plot holes and questions as well. And now you add this part, which just further complicates everything. And so I just, it's a lot going on, but overall I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. Um, this feels much more like WandaVision in the sense that we're waiting each week to kind of get another piece to the puzzle or the mystery. Whereas Winter, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, it wasn't really a, a big mystery or anything. It was just kind of seeing how this was going to play out. Like we knew the situation and we also kind of probably knew the conclusion, but we wanted to see how it was going to play out. This is much more of, uh, and, and it's not, I don't even think in the show itself is set up as a mystery. Um, they they don't know who the variant is, but they are hunting the variant, but the mystery part isn't really that big. But for us, we're trying to figure out like, yo, what's going on with the timekeeper? Like, who is this variant really? And like, so for us, it's more of a mystery. And so I've been enjoying that. But, um, let me start with what I think. What, uh, as far as some of the things I think might happen, because these, these things stood out to me. I think this happens obviously in every movie and uh, TV show, but I would say it was a little more deliberate where they really focused on some things to kind of tell you it's out of whack. Now, my first thing is um, part of this I came up with. The other part I heard from somebody else online. But my guess was uh, about halfway, maybe less than that, through the second episode, that the people at the TVA weren't created by timekeepers or anything. They are from, like, the actual place because... My thing is this, if you have um, jurisdiction over everything, like they knew about Thanos, they knew about Ragnarok, they knew about obviously Loki and Thor. So you mean to say, OK, we're outside of the universe. So it's not just Earth. We're over this whole entire existence. And so you just happen to have all people that are from Earth and look human. You just happen to have all these issues going on on earth like my thought was like they had to file on ragnarok and i'm just like why is everything they're doing on earth like i get that they're chasing the um variant on earth right now but still the other stuff we've never seen or heard them do anything outside of earth but i was just like i think these people are real people um you have uh mobius talking about uh, this jet ski and just being real like into this jet skis around the 90s. And then you had the uh, pen, which actually at this moment, I'm just realizing. And I, I don't know. Is her name Ren Slayer? I never saw the name, but I was like, is that like one name or is it Ren and then Slayer? I don't know. But her, a.k.a. 23, she had that pen that said Franklin D. Roosevelt High School. And people was like, what's the significance of that? And I'm like, well, maybe she went there and she had that pen or she found that pen when she was out in the field and she kept it because it, it she felt a sentiment towards it. Like these people had their mind wipe, but, you know, their soul and those memories are still kind of deep down in there. And so um, those two things, but mainly when they took... Um, uh, I forgot, was it B20 or whatever the one that got ki kidnapped? She kept saying when she was babbling, she was like, it's real, it's real. But then when they were talking to her, she said, I want to go home. And then it was like, we want to take it to the TV. And she said, no. 
And then she was talking about, I told them where the timekeepers are and stuff. But I think they clearly showed that when she was saying, I want to go home. And they was like, yeah, the TV is. She's like, no, that's not home. Like, if she knew that that's where uh, the variant um, has information about and all that, why would she say she wants to go there? She says she wants to go home. And so I think the variant has the uh, found a way to kind of show them what the truth is. And uh, people are like, oh, you know, uh, after you get possessed by Loki or after Loki, I don't even remember Loki. Well, Loki was the Mind Stone. Somebody was talking about that. That wasn't Loki. But people were saying after they get possessed, maybe they get messed up. But we saw B-15. She wasn't messed up. Or anybody else that we saw wake up from that, they weren't messed up. So I think um, the variant showed her something specifically. Um, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's that, yo, you you were real. Like, she showed her this was you. You lived a life. Maybe she showed her, I don't know, something about the timekeepers that wasn't right. But I feel like she would have said that. So that's what I'm kind of basing it on. It feels like the people at the TVA are not just people that, you know, from out uh, of the universe. I think these are people from Earth that were taken. Now, I heard somebody say that they were variants taken from the timeline, had their mind wiped and then trained to be TVA. And that's very possible. I think that's a strong idea. When I thought about it, I didn't think it was like specifically variants, but that would make sense. You were about to erase that part anyway. So why not take them? And then that got me thinking about the trial, because when that first happened, I'm like, what's the end result of the trial besides being reset? Like they reset that guy before he even went into the trial. And so like, but what they like, how do you plead? Like explain yourself. Like what can they say that would change anything? They said they can't put you back there. So I'm like, what's the point of the trial? And now I'm thinking that the trial is just so they can find out, are you good enough or are you worthy enough to become part of TVA where we'll erase your memory, but you'll live on and serve a purpose? Or do we just need to get rid of you? Like, were you doing something nefarious or did you do some accidental and you just kind of messed up? So we'll keep you. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I like that idea that these are variants from different eras or different timelines. And so that would make some sense to me. That would make some sense. Um, they could just be, I don't know how else they would systematically pick who to take, but yeah, that makes sense to me. So there's that. Um, I don't think it's Lady Loki. A lot of people it been saying that. A lot of people saying Enchantress. I never thought it was Lady Loki from the beginning. Um, I heard that early on, but once you never heard it from Disney, I was like, well, I don't think it's Lady Loki because we knew this actress was in here as the main person. And then they started doing this mystery of like, who's the variant? Like, we won't show the variant. I was like, didn't we kind of already see in the commercials that it's another woman that is like the main part? Like, I've heard that for a long time. I just never heard Lady Loki as like the official thing. So now we got people saying over uh, seas, some places got Sylvie in the end credits. And some people have rumored that she is Sylvie, a.k.a. Enchantress, which would make sense because Enchantress and Loki have a history that they didn't do, um, especially when they did uh, Hela. But they did Hela very differently anyway. But Enchantress was definitely a link between Hela and Loki and a lot of different things. But we know it's the MCU. They adapted. So we haven't seen Enchantress. So uh, it would be pretty uh, consistent to say in this person's timeline, she was the uh, right hand slash, you know, lover to Loki. And then he died or they call him or, or they were variants together or whoever, however. And so she knows Loki like the back of her hand as well. And so she used that as a way to throw them off the, the scent by making it seem like she's Loki. Um, but either way, I don't think it's Loki because they were very, again, deliberate to say, uh, don't call me that. I don't, you know, I don't like being called Loki. She don't want to be called that. Um, and then again, like, uh, Tom Hiddleston, 
or Loki saying like, oh, I wouldn't treat myself like that or blah, blah, blah. Like all these different hints to say like this isn't really a Loki variant. And the biggest thing to me is that was like very clear when they uh showed the little variants in the beginning, the little montage on the uh, digital display. All of them look like a version of Tom Hiddleston. And one way or the other, yes, they were, you know, different sizes, shapes, blah, blah, but they all looked like some version of Tom Hiddleston. None of them looked completely different. So to say that you have this person with short blonde hair and just looks nothing like Tom Hiddleston is Loki, I think they're being very intentional to tell you this is not Loki. So I don't know that that means much, to be honest with you. Uh, like it, whether it's Loki or not, Lady Loki or not, or Enchantress, we don't know what the plan is. And so maybe that helps you theorize. For me, I still have no idea what the plan is. Um, I, I know some people are like she's going after the timekeepers and the hunter did say I told her where to find the timekeepers. But at the same time, when Loki's like, oh, I'm going to overthrow the timekeepers, take over TVA, she has no interest in that. And so I don't know. I feel like if she was going after the timekeepers, then that plan would merge with Loki's. And when she just, you know, have him help out. I don't know. So we, we clearly don't know. We don't know what's going on. But we do know she messed up the multiverse uh, or she messed up the sacred timeline and is spiraling into a multiverse. So this is what many people have said. And this is I think I said it in my first review, but I'm going to say it now, even though I know everybody has said it already. But I was thinking this from the first episode and like because some people are like, well, we don't know. It could be, you know, we can't directly say this causes Dr. Strange too. I'm like, it is so obvious. Multiverse of madness for Dr. Strange too. And the lady literally said the time, uh, the multiverse went into madness. Like, bro, I'm like, this clearly, uh, is going to lead into that. Now, Kevin Feige threw us off. Um, he said WandaVision. Spider-Man, uh, Far From Home or No Way Home and Doctor Strange 2 are like one arc. And so far, I don't know exactly how Wanda plays into this, but I would say it's darn near like Loki is part of that arc, not WandaVision. Obviously, Wanda's going to be in Doctor Strange 2, but it seems more like a four story arc than it is just a three story arc. And so we definitely are, um, uh, seeing that the timelines are branching off. So um, I think whatever happens is going to end up with a multiverse. And that's how we go for, uh, forward with all these things. Also, I would say that I think this ends with the truth about the TVA being revealed and the TVA no longer being able to control the flow of time. And so maybe that gets uh, left up to Dr. Strange. Maybe, you know, uh, obviously Kang's going to play a factor. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I think at the end of this, the TVA is destroyed. And I think I said that in the last week one. Some of the problems, I'm going to just be quick because there's a lot. But my big thing is right now, and they haven't really explained it to us, so I wait, but I don't know how the time charges or reset charges work. Um, because either way you explain it, there's some problems. Like at first I'm thinking, okay, it goes off and it erases anything that's not supposed to be there. And it like resets everybody's memory from like the moment they stepped in. So it goes, everything goes back to normal to right before everything happened. And then it continues to flow. But then we saw it kind of erasing stuff and somebody was like, no, it just destroys everything that's there. And then it's just, it's gone because once somebody creates a Nexus event, it created a branch. And so they have to erase everything there. So those people are being, you know, quote unquote erased, but they still live in the sacred timeline at the point before the nexus event 
And so that makes sense to me. But wouldn't that mean, because I know the little line gets erased, but that doesn't mean that that place is erased, if that makes sense. So like if you go, wouldn't you be able to go to that Renaissance fair, like right where stuff happened after the time charge and it just be empty and like nothing is there? Kind of like uh, the same idea of hiding behind a natural disaster. Like um, everything's about to go away, so nothing changes. So couldn't you go to that spot because you didn't erase the place from history. You just erased everybody in the area so that they couldn't continue to make it, you know, a uh, branch. But I don't think you they had a power to physically just erase everything like out of existence, like every molecule. You know what I mean? Like if you go there, the buildings got to still be there. And well, they did. I don't know, because like somebody said, the grass wasn't erased. But even though like physical objects and people were erased. So I just feel like you couldn't get rid of the whole thing. I don't know. So uh, we don't know because they've uh, intentionally haven't shown us the full effects of what that can do. Now that Loki or the variant sent some all over the place, we need to really know what it does because we don't know what extent of damage uh, this is about to cause. So there's that. Um, and then the whole hiding in a disaster thing confuses me because she has to be there right before the disaster. Because let's say you are at that store day before and you do whatever you want. That's going to cause a nexus event because that like, let's just say somebody saw you using powers and they jumped in a car and drove like within a day, they could get to a whole nother state or two. <laughs> and so by the time the flood happens, they wouldn't die. They would now be out there with a different view of life and cause a nexus event. And so she can't get there like super early she has to be there like right before it happens so okay so how do you make a hideout i i don't know like do you just open a, i don't know i really because i guess you would jump back to the like let's say it's a three hour period and so you would jump back to the beginning of that three hour period before the flood hits but all your stuff would be gone. Or does she like drag everything through the portal? Like that's, I, I guess that's maybe how it happens because if you went three hours back, none of the stuff you accumulated would be there. And so I guess she just moved everything through the portal. I don't know. So that's a question. And then as far as how everything happened with uh, end game and how that works with this, a lot of questions. So but I'm gonna leave it there. Um, overall, like I said, I enjoy uh, the show. I enjoy the mystery. Uh, Tom Hiddleston is great. Owen Williams, oh, Owen Williams, Owen, Owen Wilson is amazing. Like the back and forth is good. I love the banter. I love the fact that Owen Wilson is a big foil for Loki. He pushes him, um, and um, he doesn't let him outsmart him at all. And I like that we have a Loki that is just kind of him, like unapologetically himself. He's just trying to get by. So I enjoy all of that. Um, and then I would say going forward, I think because a lot of people was like, oh, he's chasing that variant to stop them. I think Loki's about to go wild. I think he's going to go wild um, for a little bit because we saw a lot of crazy stuff in that trailer. And I was always wondering, like, how did we get to that point from him being in jail? So uh, I think he's going to go a little while. I think he might chase the variant. But I think once he hears the plan or once he realizes that the whole timeline is in chaos, I think he's going to be like, well, might as well go jump around while they chasing you and, you know, live my life. So I think he's going to go wild out. And then Mobius is going to be the one to go f figure out where he is. And he's going to be like. He's going to plead to him like, Loki, we really need you. Like, I think this is now 
going to go from a like kind of a ride along situation like you're kind of helping out like a 48 hours but then this is going to go into a like Loki you're one of our best hopes to do this I kind of hope not because it's like bro you could pull any Avenger or anybody but still I think that's what it's going to kind of turn into so I think we're going to see Loki wild out in timelines for a little bit so don't be uh, too surprised about that all right, so that's it for me. Um, I would say, I don't even remember if I graded the other one, but the first episode, I give a B plus. This episode, I give an A minus. So go to the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe. And remember, if you heard it, here's the official canon.